time. Hey, what's good? My name is Donnell, and I'm about to go over a couple of tips for you to survive basic training. Let's get right into it. Alexa, stop. All right, y'all, I just wanted to add some music to the beginning of my videos, kind of pipe it up a little bit. We've been getting a lot of views, and I just want to say thank you guys so much. If you can, please like this video and comment below what videos you want me to discuss. I drop one video a day trying to help out these service members, specifically pertaining to basic training, but understand that anyone, anywhere, whether you're a military spouse, that's some, you, you're married to someone and it's going off to basic training, or whether you're single, you're in the military, I'm giving advice because I love helping people and I love being a value to someone else. So understand that this channel gets straight to the point. I'm not gonna hold you up, let's get right into it. So this video is gonna talk specifically about the title, which states, tips for couples to survive basic training. Listen, when I went to basic training, I was in a relationship. I was in a relationship with my high school sweetheart. And you know, when you go to basic, you hear, all of these stories about Jody and this is then the third, but um, although I was in a relationship with another female, you still, it's the same, you know, you still get that same type of vibe from the drill sergeants or the other NCOs or whatever. They're like, hey, Jody, Jody, Jody. And you really don't understand what they're talking about. But, you know, I don't want to focus on the negativity, okay? Let's let's switch that, that Jody narrative to something positive because I do believe in long-lasting relationships and I do believe that people can fight through things together in order to strengthen their relationship. And understand that the stronger you are apart, the, the stronger you are together, okay? So sometimes that separation is needed to test the waters, okay? And if you are, if you feel like you're in a relationship that has come to an end, you know, respectfully, then, hey, you make that decision. But right now I want to focus primarily on how to pretty much survive basic training. Um, and it's not just about basic training, it's military in general. And I just got four, or excuse me, six tips that I want to talk to you guys about, okay? So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, understand new beginnings are tough, okay? Do look at this as a new opportunity to challenge your relationship, to challenge yourself. Understand that if you're in a situation where you're uncomfortable, you don't need to be there, okay? If you are looking at someone and saying, well, I want to join the military to better myself, to better my life for my family, but I don't want to leave you. Understand that you have put, in your, put yourself into a state of being comfortable and with, with that, there is no growth. So look at it as an opportunity of growth. Look at it as someone wanting to better their life, wanting to better, to better your life as a couple, whether you're married or just dating. Someone is taking that necessary step in order to better your life. And I can tell you, you know, since being in the military 10 years, it, ha it has set a, found a foundation for me that is like none, no other. You know, I talk to my friends and with the college and stuff like that, not trying to ramble, but I like being personable with you guys. You know, I talk to my, my friends that went to college and not saying they're doing bad, but, you know, we, we just took different paths and you can kind of see, you know, where they're at and where I'm at and not saying that you know, I'm better than anyone, but I took the necessary challenges in the beginning, 19 years old, took those challenges, accepted them, okay, so I can be where I'm at right now, you know, 29 years old, financially stable, you know, and, and rocking steady, all right, so what I don't want you to do is I want you to try not to view it as a negative experience that will destroy your relationships, like I said, pe so many people create negative, you know, storylines and it give you this negative feedback when it comes to, oh, you know, you leaving off a of basic training. When you get back, your girl's not going to be there. You know, somebody else is going to be with your girl or your girl going to talk to somebody else. Listen, am I saying that that don't happen? I'm not saying that. But we're talking to, if you're watching this video, you're not, you don't have that mindset. You're not worried about, you know, you're, you going to basic training and your girl talking to someone else. You're not worrying about your, your, your boyfriend going to basic training and someone else trying to talk to you because you're focused, you know, you, you, you are solely committed to the person that you're with and you, you're watching this video because you want to gain an understanding and you want to try to be the best support system for your loved one that's going away. So don't look at it as a negative experience. Don't listen to negativity. Don't watch videos about Jody and all that craziness. Keep a positive mindset. Okay. Is it going to be hard? Yes. 
but you have to speak positive affirmations into your life. Number two, build your tribe, okay? Find other military significant, find other military that are significant um, to your situation and you chat with them, you know, especially ones attached to your loved one's division or platoon, i.e. now you might have a Facebook group for your service member that's going off and you see other people commenting on the Facebook group or whatever social media site it is, you know, reach out to them, say, hey, I see you have a son or daughter, or hey, I see you have a boyfriend or girlfriend that's, you know, in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina too. What, you know, if you don't mind me asking, what part are you in? Like, I'm having a, a tough time. I think about, you know, him or her all the time. Can we just, you know, talk on the phone or reach out? Because there are people that are, you know, having the same thoughts that you are and having that support system is very important. So understand I say build your tribe, but understand that you want to be, have a tribe that is positive. You know, they, they're, they're faithful, they're, they're supportive, they're taking care of the household while the loved one is, you know, at basic training, trying to better themselves. Okay. What I don't want you to do is don't get involved in negative social media groups. There are a lot of so negative social media groups out there. There's a lot of, you know, spouses and husbands and they, they they're negative you know they you have those ones you know with with good comes the bad so keep that in mind like i said screen screen the individual that you're talking to make sure that they are in line with your morals and values okay and then you develop that partnership that friendship with them so that you both can get through the tough times together moving on focus on bettering yourself okay well, and this is for the service member that's leaving or yourself, you know, work on yourself in any way you see fit. You know, if you want to you meditate, you know, uh, an hour a day, if you want to go work out. So when your, your spouse comes, when you see your spouse at basic training, they, they're like, wow, like, you know, why, while I was here doing this, you were actually doing this. And, you know, this is remarkable work on yourself, whether that's, you know, learning a different language, whatever, you know, take up a skill, a trade, you know, just better yourself. It can be something very little and say, hey, I'm going to work out 30 minutes a day, work on yourself because that's important. Just as well as your spouse is working on themselves and developing themselves at basic training, you know, they are, they want you to be doing the same. Okay. And that's what a partnership is, you know, like-minded individuals coming together to make, you know, huge sacrifices to better their life, to be successful. Okay. But I don't want you to do is don't let the days drag by and you're not doing nothing, but waiting to hear from your loved one. When, when your loved one is at basic training, you may or may not hear from them, you know, just depending on training, i.e. will they get phone calls? Yes. They get phase, phase over phone calls. Will they be able to write you? Yes. But understand that, you know, like there was a storm and, you know, the, you know, UPS services stopped working due to the storm. There's different factors and circumstances where you may not get a letter for three days. Are you going to, what, what is your reaction going to be? What are you going to do throughout the day? You know, don't just sit and twiddle your thumbs and wait for somebody. Yes. Wait by the phone, but make sure that you're active. Okay. I, you know, I'm pretty sure your, your spouse don't want you you know, losing your sanity and becoming depressed, um, you know, behind this. So make sure you're doing things to work on yourself, to keep your mind off of, you know, the actual task at hand. Number four, adjust your expectations. Be flexible. It makes life so much easier in general. You know, understand, like I just, this kind of ties into number three. You, you never know what's going to happen. Oh, did I leave my keys in the door again? Ah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. Doing <clears throat> that. makes life so much easier. Like I said, this kind of ties into number three. You have to understand that. You may or may not get letters, just depending on the individual day, the individual event. So you have to be prepared for that, you know, adjust to your expectations. If you tell yourself, if I don't receive a letter, you know, in two days, what, what, what am I going to, how am I going to react? Am I just going to, you know, I need to be patient. I need to understand the situations. Or you can write, you can, the thing about it, you can write as many letters as you want. 
you know, you can write a letter every day if you want, you know, make it, make it make sense for you, but just don't worry yourself to the point where you're becoming sick or you're, you know, you're not eating, you know, things of that nature. What I don't want you to do is don't get upset if you don't get as many letters as you, as you have sent. Okay. Sometimes it's a choice between, between sleep or writing, you know, so that means you, you know, your loved one might say, man, I'm extremely tired today was in, you know, I was exhausted. Um, and I'm just, I'm just going to shower and legit get in the bed. Right. Because I have fire guard tonight and, you know, we got a ruck march tomorrow where we got to be up at five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I'm going to choose to go to sleep. Understand that that, that happens, you know, your, your service member, your, your spouse, that's at basic training may say I'm choosing sleep over writing a letter. It's okay. Be understanding. You know, when you write them a letter and say, Hey, I haven't heard from you. Da, 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 what is going on? Like be understanding. If you do write them say, Hey, I understand that you haven't wrote me. It's okay. I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. I love you. And I can't wait to see you. I'm so happy that you're doing this. I understand that you are tired, but you are working extremely hard and, and your friends and family can't wait to see you on graduation day. Be positive, all right? And that goes right into number five. Be supportive. You know, write encouraging letters every chance you get. Tell, tell him or her about your day, you know, in a positive way, okay? In a positive way. What I don't want you to do is don't constantly share negative or bad events that happen. One thing that really kind of blows me, like blows my mind is how like people literally send letters. And every time I used to hand out letters, I see trainees just like bawling out crying. I'm like, training, you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, you know, and I'll just put them on a break. And I was like, hey, you and the battle buddy come see me. But it's like, I never understood why family members would send like bad, like family members, girlfriends, whatever, would send such bad information. Understand if it is life or death, i.e. someone's in, you know, ICU or something with health. It's like I, like I mentioned in another video, send a Red Cross message, okay? Don't write the training. You, you know, you have access to the Red Cross. If you, someone's about to be born, you know, their child is about to be born, call the Red Cross. That way he, he or she can get the message fast, you know, because, you know, I had a trainee, you know, someone wrote him, you know, a loved one wrote him, said, hey, your best friend got shot. It's just like, wow, like, you know, you, you, you couldn't wait to tell him that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really, I don't know when's the best time to tell someone bad news, you know, but be supportive, understand where that service member is at and Try to place yourself in their shoes. That's really what I, I'm trying to say. Place yourself in your loved one's shoes and say, hey, if I was there, would I want to know this right now at basic training? You know, especially if, you're, if your loved one is, is writing you letters and saying, hey, I'm having a tough time being here. I miss you guys so much. I'm ready to quit. You know, I don't know if I even want to be here. Don't just be inconsiderate and, and, and send bad, bad news, you know? Like be considerate of, the, of that, you know, service members, feelings and what they what they could be possibly going through because a lot of times they may seem like they're at their strength you know well where, where you might have a loved one that don't even want to show you their weaknesses right so you might say well he he telling me or she telling me they're killing basic training and this is easy and you know xyz so you like, okay, well, let me just go ahead and, you know, not thinking nothing of it. Let me just update him on, you know, so-and-so in jail or so-and-so, you know, got into a car accident and is in, in the hospital, God forbid. But, you know, in reality, that serve, your, your loved one is going through stuff mentally, being in basic training. Maybe they aren't getting along with people. You, you know what I'm saying? So just be understanding. I mean, you know your person. You know, you can read, whether it's through a letter, on the phone, you, you can read between the lines pretty fair uh, and make that make a good judgment based off that last but not least okay this is not all of the things but this is some of the things that I wanted to hit on in this video number six keep the end in mind okay remind your loved one how proud you are of their efforts and understand that the end state is for them to graduate and to graduate on time to graduate you know top of the class to graduate you know being promoted you know, so, you know, don't complain about how long it's taken to get to graduation day. Don't say, oh, you know, I can't wait to see you. It's taking so long. Oh, due to COVID, you've been there for extra two weeks. That's bull crap. 
oh, I only got to talk to you three days out of the, you know, I only got to talk to you three times out of the whole nine weeks. That was crap. You understand that naturally as human beings, we tend to focus on the negative. We tend to focus on the negative as, as human beings. I challenge you to focus on the positive. You know, um, in basic training, your service member, your loved one will learn about hunting the good stuff. And it's an MRT class. They get master resiliency training throughout the phase, throughout the basic training time. And they're going to learn about hunting the good stuff. But I want to talk to you briefly about hunting the good stuff, okay? Hunting the good stuff means every single day out of your life, you're going to find something that you're thankful for, something that you appreciate, uh, you appreciate, something that happened that you just want to take a moment to reflect on it. For example, today, today I got off at three o'clock, you know, what's how, and, and when you state that good thing that happened today, the, it's not going to work if you don't reflect on it. So for example, I say, hey, I got off at three o'clock today. You know, what's the reflection? Why was that a good thing? I was able to come home and cook and clean. And I was also able to come home and give you guys this video a little bit earlier than I've been giving it to you in the past. So that's my good thing for today. And, and research shows that if you reflect on your day with just one good thing that happened, your, your outlook on life will increase like phenom, like, you know, do crazy numbers, crazy numbers. Okay. The outlook on life, your happiness, your state of mind will change dramatically just by reflecting on one good thing that happened. So when you write your letters, I want you and your, your spouse to come up with things throughout your letters and say, you know, we're going to write about our day. We're going to write about how much we love each other. But at the end of every letter, we're going to write about, you know, hunting the good stuff. You know, we're going to we're going to close out every letter with something positive. I challenge y'all to do that. And that's just something that you guys can think about. My name is Donnell Miles. I thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope this wasn't too long, but I hope this helped all my couples out there, um, you know, get through the tough situations. Understand that, you know, if you are a, a, a spouse to a military service member, it won't be easy. OK, it won't be easy and vice versa. Being a military service member married to a civilian or another service member, it's, it won't be easy. It never gets easy. OK, it's, it's only going to get harder. But at the same time, your relationship will grow and become more stronger if you guys work through things together. All right. I'll catch y'all on the ne next video. I hope this helped you guys out and I'll see y'all later.